what I want you to kind of point out while we had the form of a solution here is some of the things that um, kind of you know, useful to have a motivating uh, kind of introduction. So one of the things you will see in your textbook somewhere is something called the time independent Schrodinger equation. So this is a time dependent Schrodinger equation because it's a partial derivatives as of you know function with respect to position and time. The time independent Schrodinger equation is a Schrodinger equation that describes a subset of solutions here that's called a stationary state or states don't vary with the time. And let me write down what that um, equation looks like so that I have some place to get to. And I'm not really going to drive it because that's probably more upper division thing. You talk about separable solutions and whatnot. I will just point to things without writing them down. So this is the time independent of Schrodinger equation. Minus h bar squared over 2m. And um, now I use lowercase psi, which will only be a function of position. That's the time independent portion. And that's going to be an ordinary derivative with respect to x, double still, plus vx times the same time independent wave function is equal to e, just the energy number, not an operator, just the number times psi of x. And there's a lot about mathematical properties of this stationary state that, uh, um, that I won't get into. But what I have written down here, this is a stationary state. You might ask, how is that stationary? I have it as a function of time. So this is the thing about stationary state. It's not that it doesn't have any dependence on time. It always has this fixed dependence on time. So this is so-called a stationary state. It's actually a part of the, um, there's a full wave function, but you can always write down the full wave function this way. It's this full wave function. Once again, this is only for stationary states, no other state. For stationary states, you can say that this is whatever the position wave function times and the time dependence is always in this predictable way, e to the minus i omega t. And if there's time later, later in the week or next to week after spring break, um, if there's time, I might, we might be able to go into in what sense it is stationary. Uh, we'll probably do that on Thursday, actually. So, but, so this is the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And the way it comes about is you assume that your wave function is a stationary state. Then this is the nice thing that happens. When you take the, when you evaluate the right hand side, all you get is h bar times omega, always. So you can say h bar omega is energy. That's where that e comes from. And on the left hand side, you know, you had the e to the minus i omega t that remains here, here, that just canceled out in every term. So when, when you have done that, that's where, that's how you come, uh, end up with the time independent Schrodinger equation. And in fact, uh, what we call energy eigenstate, um, this is an example of energy eigen, this is energy eigenvalue. This is one of the allowed energies. And the states that have these energies are the energy eigenstate. Those are, on, um, well, those are the stationary states. Uh, so what's called the stationary state are the states with a definite value of energy. 